think it's yep, just about seven o'clock. Oh, I needed that. Right, let me know. Oh, Valerie, I have Valerie. Just put you down a little bit so you can see a bit better. How are you doing? Well, at least I know I've got somebody watching. Oh, I've got three watching. Are you Sharon? Not spoke to you today. Are you Kaz? Hi, Jenny LaRue. Oh, Jenny LaRue. That's a nice name. Hi, Aileen. Long time no see. <laughs> Round of applause, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, Ellen McElvina is watching. Hiya, Helen. If I get your name wrong, I'm sorry. It's quite late for me. I'm usually in bed. Hiya, Valerie. Well, I'm going to start chatting to you anyway because um, I have been quite busy this week and I'm getting my sojo back. Not that I ever really lost it. I am well, um, thanks Aileen. I'm a bit tired, but um, I'm getting there. I hope you are too. Can't wait while we can have classes again and see you all in the flesh, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting my sojo back. I, I lost it a little bit and I think it's with the upset of uh, everything that I have had, everything that's going on. Don't forget the chocolate bit. Oh, I've just had the chocolate biscuit. Um, I had two actually. I've not had any dinner. Hi Sarah, uh, sorry if I keep cutting off. Um, right, so yeah, I lost my sojo a little bit and it's because of the little one being ill and um, the upset in the house, as you know, a lot of, yeah. Hiya uh, Sarah, uh, Aya Jude. Um, we've been having a lot of work done and it is coming together now, so I'm really pleased about that. But it, it means I'm not, I'm not focused on too much on that, so I'm spending a bit more time down in my sewing room and I am enjoying it again, which I'm really pleased about. I've never lost it really, but I'm just getting more um, easy going about it. So what have I been sewing this week? Quite a lot actually, and quite a lot of it has actually gone out to people. Um, I adjured, uh, I've been doing masks, who hasn't? Um, these ones are going to Newcastle for my uh, nephew. Um, but I also tried the shaped ones, um, I a barrel, and I must say this one is quite comfortable and I'm quite pleased with it. I think I need shorter elastics though. I am Margaret, I am Jane. So they are quite comfortable and they've got the nose things in. And that was thank you to my friend Carol. Um, and I have put the PP fabric on the inside. Hi Angela. So um, I do find that these are a little bit more comfortable. I do need to make shorter things. Saying that, I am gonna use the um, holders at the back. I'll show you them when we go over to the cutting desk. So I quite like this. Um, my friend Carol helped me out with the pattern. She's She did it from a plate. So I think there's a tutorial on um, YouTube somewhere where you cut the plate, cut around a 12 inch plate and cut it into four. That's the one that this is took from and it is a lot more comfortable. And also because it's got the main fabric on the outside, then um, you're not going to get mistaken and put the wrong side against your mouth. Uh, do you put interfacing in yourself? I haven't put any interfacing in Bev. Um, the reason being this is PP fabric. I have a little bit left. Please don't ask me for elastic. I'm now calling it Rocking Horse Poo. Um, Sharon, you are very lucky to get um, the last bit off me. I've got none left apart from that. <laughs> but I have got 600 metres on order, so um, I have got some more coming in. Hiya, Moya. I spoke to you for ages. So, yeah, so I've been doing masks, obviously. Still got pile to do. Um... Also, my son graduated from um, his year. Now, this is a new thing to me. I've no idea when the children in England started, well, in the UK, started um, graduating from the years in school. But anyway, it's, it's a thing, apparently. So my grandson, Jack, the eldest of my grandchildren, he's 13, graduated. And um, his mum told me at the last minute they were having a graduation party he has done amazingly well uh do you put a filter in no joyce i don't not in these ones because this is 
um, moisture proof fabric but what I've been telling people to do in the foldable ones I've left the seam open and I've just been cutting the PP fabric into small pieces and telling them to put a piece inside so I'm not going to put this on because this one's mine and this is going to my nephew so I don't want to have you any idea to stop your glasses from steaming up because that's what happens to me right Bev that's what I'm saying this one because we've got the little things in, right, I will tell you what they are. I didn't get them. Carol gave me a pack of these and uh, they are called Nosebridge for Masks, comma, 10 for DIY, mask, for DIY mask making kit. And these are from, oh, it's back to front. Right, it's back to front to me. I don't know if it's back to front to you. Um... I will put the code on um, Facebook afterwards. So if you want to order these, you can. They're from Amazon. I think they're about eight pounds a packet, but there's a lot in a packet. And these stick onto the nose bridge inside. So you put, well, how I do them is I stitched, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to, stitched down the curved side, opened it out. And on the main one, got a little bit of Minnie Mouse here. I took the little strip, peeled the bit of um, backing off and I popped that onto the inside at the side of where the stitches were. So then when I stitched the other side to it, I did a, like a channel so that I didn't have to put it in afterwards and that worked a treat. So basically, because you are clipping that around your nose, it doesn't let your breath come up to your glasses so your glasses don't get steamed i'm not saying they won't get steamed at all but they won't get steamed as much ladies of my age and uh, i'm sure you're in a similar situation bev you know what it's like so i do find that these ones are a lot more comfortable to wear and if we're going to be wearing them a lot more often then obviously i think that's the way to go use micro pore tape and put the mask iron up your nose good idea sarah see everybody's got ideas so if you, if you can't get hold of them you could try Sarah's tip of uh, micropore tape, but um, I find that this works fantastically. So yeah, I've been doing masks um, and still doing masks. I may do a little bit um, later on. Hi, Shell. Long time no see. Ah, quick slurp. Right. So this week I also. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't tell you the story about Jack. So Jack's had his graduation and Laura decided the couple of nights before she was going to do a barbecue for him because he's got quite a lot of awards for um, being the being a very competent homeschool learner. So we were all really proud of him and um, they're in our bubble. So we decided to have a barbecue and she wanted to make, or she wanted him to have the gown and the motorboard. So um, I saw... So I made the gown out of a black poplin and uh, made quite long sleeves um, and I did the motorboard and I used the very heavy interfacing and made a skull cap and then I stitched, because you can stitch through it obviously. Uh, can Sarah put the micropore on Facebook please? Sarah, I don't know if you can see that, but Jude Vidler is saying, can you put the micropore, is, is that the, you wanting to know where you get it from, uh, Sue, sorry, Jude, because um, it's a medical one that you use for um, bandages and things. Um, so if it is a specific one, then I'm sure that uh, Sarah will. You can buy micropore from chemist, yeah. There you go, Jude, just go to the chemist and ask for micropore tape. And it is quite sticky, so I think that would work well. And if you put that over the um, mask to keep it in place, I'm sure it would help you. So anyway, I made the um, my, uh, mortarboard and then made a little tassel out of embroidery thread and uh, made him a cake with um, a little uh, graduation boy on it. So how to use it for the face masks. I'm presuming, tell me if I'm wrong, Sarah, you're just going to put your face mask against your, the bridge of your nose and put a little bit of tape to hold it in place. If not, try the um, nose, nose bridge things. Are you Valerie? Um, Valerie. You're not Valerie, you're Val. Are you Val? 
So yeah, so I, I made a cake and I made him the gown and I made him the motorboard and it was a lovely day. The only sunshiny day we've had for a couple of weeks and it was on our Jack's graduation day. So it was lovely. We had a really nice day. So what else have I been making? Well, I went to Walton's. Uh, that's a sewing, well, no, a fabric shop in uh, Goldthorpe, which I think it's classed as just tear a piece off and stick to nose and edge of mask, yeah. Oliver says hello. Hiya, Oliver. Are you watching? Are you at Nana's again? That's the little grandson that was on last, not last week, with the week before. Um, I told you that me and Diana share him. Uh, we're just telling him about the, your Jack's, that's Jack's brother, uh, graduation day, Oliver. It was lovely, weren't it? We had a good time. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that. We went to, uh, me and Abigail, their sister, went to uh, Walton's and it's Rotherham based, a uh, lovely fabric shop and we bought some lycra and I bought some, um, I actually went for um, some baby jersey for Robin's vest. Um, I must say they didn't have a lot of that but they had lots and lots of other stuff so I did get lots and lots of other stuff. Um, it was brilliant, yes it was Diana. So I got some stretch denim, I'm going to have a go at jeans. Um, I will let you see them as I get on with them. I got some lycra for the kiddies. I can just about see the lycra that Abigail chose. So I'll show you this because it's beautiful. Oh, reach over. Yep, got it. Sorry if I knocked the camera then. So this was the last piece of this. So sorry if anybody is wanting it, but I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, you can see the sparkle on that. It's beautiful. So Abigail is wanting um, a t-shirt, but it is lycra. But I think, actually, I think it'll work as a t-shirt or a vest top for her anyway. And um, Laura being Laura, my magpie daughter, she wants um, a bikini. So it looks like she's, she'll be getting a bikini. So I got the lycra from there and the, um, the fabric shop in um, Goldthorpe. It does a lot of lace and um, theatre costume stuff as, as well. So if you want anything out of the ordinary, it's a brilliant place to go. So um, I got quite a few things from there. And then I decided I wanted to make a cushion for the pergola. Now, Mark has been doing the outside decking. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Mary. And um, he's done this pergola with a seat bench. And uh, I, Sandra, so I decided I needed a pad for it. So what I did, I got all my um, jelly roll strips, not all my, I've got a load of jelly roll strips. I got some of my jelly roll strips and I just cut a few grey ones out to blend in. And I made a cushion, well, I actually bought the pad from Dunelm. Um, it's about three inches thick, maybe. Um, I'll show you on the edge there. So it's about three inches thick and what I did, I put a zip down the back. So it's the blue foamy stuff and um, I just put calico on the back so that I can actually take it off to wash it. So if you're watching Oliver, we've now got a nice cushion to sit on the pergola and uh, watch the goings on in the garden. So I've done that as well. I've just finished that today. I've also been doing my block of the month and um, I don't know if Siobhan's watching, but um, Siobhan sent me the ruler so that I could trim all the blocks to put them together. So that arrived today, Siobhan, thank you very much. When I go over to the cutting table, I will show you the um, few of the blocks that I've done and I will show you the ruler because it's a bit different. It's from America and she's had to order it in. So if anybody's doing um, quilt as you go machine embroidery, um, then it's a really useful tool to have. I have ordered one, but mine's not here yet. Um, oh, did you like that, Sue? Hiya, Julie. Yeah, well, I actually think it's a, a good thing to use up all your jelly roll strips on things like cushions and that, that you, especially for outside. Um, but to be honest, it's actually cost quite a lot of money. In fact, I didn't show you what, how I did it. I actually put wadding in as well. So if you can see close up, this is the quilt as you go that I did on the last um, what's on my work desk and uh, hi Julie 
this is the Amelie Scott and this is the watermelon. I think this is on 11 or 12 uh, file. So I actually got my um, strips, sewed them all together, added it to my wadding and then quilted on the edge to edge quilting. And it works out brilliantly. So it gives the cushion a bit extra form as well. So I'm quite pleased with that. And I love the edge to edge quilting. I have been covering cushions for Sun's motor home. Oh, that's it, Sarah. Once you can sew, that's it. That's it. Everybody in the caravans want their cushions covering. Are you Pauline? Right, so I'm just having a... Oh, Pauline, I know which you, who you are now. I always get you mixed up. I'm ready for this. That's better. Right, so I'm going to take you over to the cutting table and I will try and get a little bit of something done. So I'm just unplugging it. I'm going to take you for a little walk. Apologies for the rocking. I'll try and move it a little bit slower. I'll let you see where we're going. It's not very tidy, I'm afraid. Still got orders to go out. Right, so I'm going to my cutting table. Something else I bought. I don't know what the... Oh, it's not too bad, actually. I bought a new stand. Um... Hi, Pauline. So this is the um, cutting table and I've got a stand for my um, iPad and it's absolutely amazing. I got it from Amazon and uh, it means that I can stand my tablet on the floor so I'm not having to try and prop it up on the tables. So this is the fabric that I got from Walton's for the baby vests and it's a lovely stretch to it but it, the recovery is not brilliant so it, it does recover but it's it's curls a little bit so I don't know if I'm going to use this for the binding on the vest or not but I'm going to have a go anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the vest out now this is the pattern that I made so give me a week or so to turn this into um, a proper pattern and then if anyone wants it I'll put it on um, well just email me actually email me if you want it and I'll see if I can send it out as a PDF um, because I know you all know my granddaughter's got problems and that my son and his wife don't really want to talk about it, you know, on Facebook, which is fair enough, that's, that's their prerogative. Um, but she's got, a, well, she's got a lot of problems. One of them being um, she's got um, brittle bones. It's not the brittle bone disease, she's just got very brittle bones. So she has to have vests that open up. So I've made a pattern from a tiny vest, okay, look at the size, that's the front of the vest there. It's absolutely tiny. I've made a pattern and um, I'm going to release it, not for sale, to anybody who needs a vest for a baby. I'm going to do different sizes as well. I'm going to release it, you can have it free of charge and I'm going to show you how I would put one together. Now, she has been growing a little bit, so that was the first size that I did for her. Um, but She's still indoors, just, but I'm making her the next size now, so she's got room to grow. So the next size, and I will release both sizes, and as, as she gets older and needs bigger sizes, I will actually release those as well. So this is the, the front of the new one, and it's basically three pieces. So you've got your, your back, your front, and your side pieces that's what overlaps where you put your velcro obviously if it's for a, a baby who hasn't got problems um higher janet then you could use poppers or um press studs or whatever you wanted so um but this is for a five pound baby um so right without further ado i'm going to use my new pattern weights and i love these these are the dolly mamas and i've got these from Corson country yeah, cost which is I think that. Um, I love these, so I'm going to use these to help me with cutting out. Use spray starch before you cut it, it will stop it curling. Good idea, Sarah, but it's too late, I've cut it. So. It's all right, I think I can manage it, but that's a very good idea. Right, so uh, I will do that next time. I'm just going to pop a couple of, I'm going to cut two out because it's, it's just as easy to cut two as it is one. 
make sure those elephants are going the right way. And make sure I'm going to use my scissors. I'll try not to get in front of it, just I'll just cut this as a square first. I know it's wasting fabric, but it's easier for you to see. Right, so let's cut this out. Yeah, that's a very good idea, that, um, Sarah. I will keep that in mind. I'm not going to do it now because I, I don't want to be wasting, you know, your time. I, I only like to do about an hour because I know it gets a bit boring and, well, it's not boring for me, but I'm sure for some of you it must be. Going round, and the better you cut this out, I know I'm rushing, but the better you cut this out, the easier the binding will be. I did also say that I would do um, some embroidery and or scan and cut to put some designs on it with vinyl. Hiya, Bob. Um, so I will do that, but I'll probably do it on a t-shirt. Right. So I think me and Sharon are going to have a trip out to Fabworks for some uh, baby jersey when we can. Or when they're open, I don't know if you found out if they're open or not. Or if anybody knows if Fabworks have opened back up yet. Going around all the little nooks and crannies. Like I said, the better you spend, the more time you spend cutting out, the better a result you'll get because the binding goes directly onto this. But I'm quite pleased with the pattern actually. It seems to work brilliantly for her. Right, so. There, I've got my two pieces. Hiya, Michelle. So that's one. I mean, it, it is a babyish fabric, but it's just not what I would have chosen um, if I'd have had a choice. You know, it's, it's cute. And uh, I'm going to do the Pants for Pirates hat as well um, to match. So she's got, to, but she's not wearing clothes at the moment anyway. So it um, doesn't matter too much. Right, so I'm going to keep these on the straight of grain, and obviously you need two for each vest. So I need to cut four. With jersey, it's quite important that you do keep things straight as grain as much as possible. Because, excuse me, um, swinging will happen, and not the kind of swinging that we know. Um, basically, that means that you'll sew your seam and it will end up twisting round um, and that's because you've not got your seam running straight down the grain so if you get lay your fabric down and look at the actual grain line try and keep it as straight as possible and before I go to the machine I will show you because I'm on a chander next week on the 31st so what I've decided to do is, I have revamped my um, fabric storage bag. So before we go and do that, I'll show you. So this is the fabric storage bag. Basically, it's got a little pocket there, so you can put in, hi Joanne, you can put in um, what's in your fabric storage bag. So if you've got a few, in fact, let me get the other one. I need to stretch a bit. So this is the other one. So you can have them all piled up and put in a label of what's in each each box. So I've actually changed it by I put the thicker zipper in so that it's going to be more sturdy. I've done it in a quilting cotton. 
so a lot nicer fabric and I have put in it the extra strong interfacing um, Hey up Angie, that's my sister Did you enjoy Whitby? And inside we've got the compartments so you don't have to put them in if you don't want to so you could easily just take those out and just have it as a, a big case and then you've got the top that you can actually see but, and it's glittery so it's lovely so that's what I'm going to put on a chander um, next next week and I've put two zippers on as well so that you can keep your sliders into the middle um, but what I have in this one is um, I've been buying things for the new uh, kitchen and this one is the Lessian sushi roll which is basically a jelly roll but in uh, their terms and it's um, Lynette Anderson and this is the ship to shore and I think it's absolutely lovely oh thank you Diana so what I got was I got the jelly roll sorry the sushi roll and I got um, a charm pack and I got a palette I am a massive fan of Lina Anderson and that's the, the panel. So I'm going to make a quilt for the new kitchen wall and with the uh, sushi roll, I'll just move it up so you can see what's further down on it. I'm going to make, isn't it beautiful? I love it. Look at the whale, Oliver, and the seahorses and the sharks. No, not sharks, the fish. And then we've got the ship and the little dog watching. So I'm going to make a quilt for the wall and out of the sushi roll, I'm going to make um, a jelly roll rug. So that, I'll to open it. Oh, God, can't bring myself to open it. And I also, these were from Coast to Shore as well. I also got some um, roll ends and some fat quarters. So I think that's the stitched with love, is it? Pins and needles. So I got a couple of those. And then I like a background one, so I've got a few different background ones. And until I get time to play with them, I'm just storing them in my new fabric storage, storage bag. And while I was going through my Lena Anderson things, I found a pattern that I'd forgotten I'd got. So, happy days. So I'm going to put all them back in there and then I will go and show you how we do that first. Anybody got any questions? Lynn. Oh, do you like that, Lynn? Thank you. I love Lynn Anderson's things. I think she's absolutely brilliant designer. I will also have my um, whip storage bag back on. I ah, can't get enough of these. I need to make some more um, inside bits because uh, I need more storage basically. Right, so what I'm going to do is I've got my pieces here. I'm going to go over to the overlocker. Now I've not done this with this new stand. So I'm hoping that we're going to be all right. So apologies. I will take you as slowly and steadily as I can so you don't get seasick. Right, so I'm gonna pop you here and then I'll just turn it round when I go to the lock stitch. So, what can we see? Is that all right? Well, you can see the machine all right. So, uh, have you got some kits for the smaller storage bag? Yes, Bev, that's the whip storage bag. Oh, hold on, let me just put you straight. And uh, you might need to go back a little bit. You're a bit close. Let's just move you back a bit. Um, let me just show you. And then you might understand why I need to make some more inners. So the um, working process bag, now this is my own fabric. Um, they left a bit of fabric behind. Did I? Oh, I'm sure I'll find out when I need it. So in here, you've got a zip pocket at the front and that's where I keep my patterns and things. You left a bit on the cutting table. Oh, you eagle-eyed people. And then inside, 
I'm only going to do one vest anyway, so I think I'll be all right. Now, inside, you've got enough room for all your bits and pieces and all your goodies. Um, actually, that's what I'm working on at the moment, which is, it's a Lynette Anderson pattern, and it's, um, it's going to be a thread storage. So, work in, pro in progress, and that's what the bag's for. But inside, you get some... You get a little bit like this, or you make a little bit like this, that opens out and then you can store all your threads and all your bits and pieces inside there. So um, it's really useful. You've got little magnetic clasps on there. Yeah, exactly, Bev. It would be good for cross stitch. Um, and they just clip inside, if you can see it. There's a cap, because I've got it on the table. So you can see there, they just clip onto the inside and then you can store everything inside that's why i need more so yes i have got those just get in touch with me bev and i will um point you in the right direction so i'll just put all them back inside because it is bursting at the seams but again it's got the thicker zip on there so it's a bit more um sturdy let's say right so First of all, right, I would interface these little um, seams here. I'm not doing it um, because time really. I don't want to be taking you over to the iron and coming back. Um, I will get better at this. But for now, I'm just going to interface because I'm not putting poppers on. If you were putting poppers on, you would need to interface it um, because obviously the prongs are going to pierce the fabric and then it could... Um, as you're pulling it apart it could pull through but I'm not going to be um, using poppers on it I've got to put velcro on so I'm just folding that in half I'll just turn you around a little bit more that's better and I'm going to stitch that together so I'm getting the next one folding that in half right sides together I'm only doing one, so I'll just take that one out. You can chain piece, trim off all your threads. And now I'm going to do the opposite end by folding that. Obviously at home you would be pressing in between and doing all the good stuff like you should. So I'm now going to just put my finger inside and fold that over and pop it to the right side. And that's where you would take it to your iron station and give it a press. So the next one, you are right, you eagle-eyed people. I did leave a piece, look, I've only got one for my next vest, but I'm not doing it, so it's all right. So now I'm going to take one of the fronts and one of the backs put them out away for later i'm going to lay oops dropped one of my pieces i'm going to lay the back down and i'm going to pop the front on matching up the side seams i will show you because i know you can't see on the desk so i'm matching up these side seams here And I'm going to stitch down that side. Probably see better when I open it out. So I'm doing about a 1.5 seam allowance. Right, so now when I open that out, you can see we've got the front, I think. No, that's the back of the vest there. And then joined in the middle. And then you've got the front of the vest there uh, right so what I need to do now is take one of these and match the raw edges hang on am I doing it right no I don't I need to put my bind my piping on see I've forgotten my own pattern already I'll just pick that one up so we're going to turn round to the lock stitch 
which is just here. Now this is an old beast. So it's a bit noisy. I don't know if you can see it from there. Let's just move here so you can see it better. That's better. There we go. So you can see here, this is the um, foot that I got um, from eBay and this makes it so much easier. Now I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm just gonna cut off the excess of this and run that out. I find it easier rather than trying to pull it out just to run it through and then thread the new one in. So I told you it were a bit curly but I'm gonna see if we can do it. So what I'm going to do first is Cut it to a point and I'm going to thread it in between these little prongs here so it goes in, out, in and then it needs to go down this chute here. So if I get, will that fit in there? Yeah, that'll fit. No, maybe not. I will get, so I'll get my old picket that will fit in. So if I Pop that point in there and push it down. I can catch it at this end and pull it through. Right, so if I keep it loose, even though it's curling, it'll probably be all right. If it's not, I will just do it in um, a white binding and do what Sarah suggested and um, starch it. Right, so I'm just going to make sure it's all folding nicely before I start to use it. So if I put that there, it might just go in nicely. Have I got it doing right yet? Yes, yeah, just about right now. I'm just running a bit through until it comes out of the other side right. Right, so what I'm going to do now is put this as straight as I can. I'm going to keep my eye on that. And I'm going to take the edge of this fabric here and I'm going to feed it in between the um, binding there. I'm going to get my unpicker and I'm just going to make sure it's going in nicely. And that will just take it can you see all right? I'm not stretching it, I'm just letting it go in, following it around. And I'm keeping it right up against that bit of metal there. As I come up to the top, I'm going to start to manipulate it around. Use my you need to take quite a bit of time doing this. I'm just making sure it's staying inside. Don't want any holes in it. Coming back around because it is quite a tight little curve. But there we go. And I'm coming back down the front now. Make sure it stays in. I don't know if it's come out there, but we'll see. And then round the neck. And I'm going to keep an eye on it, and I've not, have I? So I'll just make sure it's going to get back in line. I could do with Sharon here to feed it through for me. She's been working, so I'll let her off. Just make sure that stays nice and flat, or as flat as you can keep it. It's still all right so far. So just take your time with it. You'll find that the better quality of the jersey, it won't roll as much as this. It is quite annoying. Are you old, old, holding your breath for me? <laughs> It'll be a pretty little best when it's done. So just take your time around them curves. Slowly does it. I 
They are no vests of probably a pound each if you go to a supermarket, but you can't get them that open up. And you know, maybe you've got a child that's got problems with um, certain products, you know, this way you can make them out of organic fabrics. The I think next time I'll use I will use some starch there. Good idea. So just coming round the back uh, curls now. Uh, straps. Even if you do miss a little bit on these straps, you know it doesn't really matter because you're going to be putting Velcro on. So the Velcro is going to cover a multitude of sins. But obviously you want to do as good a job as you can. So I'm just feeding it in with my own picker as I go around those tight curls. And stuck around my machine. Come on, not long to go. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to even it out without stretching it. So as you stretch it, that's when the, um, the pieces curl. Last tight curve here. I did the hardest one first, so I get it out of the way. Well, you're not talking, so you must all be holding your breath for me. What are you all doing with your um, sewing projects? Anybody got anything good on? Last one coming up. Tell me what you've been sewing. And are you all missing sewing B? I'm really missing it. I loved my Wednesdays. I don't understand how the um, MasterChef and them are on all time. Right, coming up to the last bit now. So I'm just going to run that bit out. And I'm going to cut it off and I'll show you what we've achieved. Alright, so you can see here. Oh, not bad, not bad at all. So we've got that nice curve there going round the top. Round the front of the vest. Round the next one. Oh, so far so good. Oh, I've got a little tiny, tiny little hole there. But I'll put my Velcro on that bit. Machine embroidered for Christmas prints. Good idea, Jude. Good idea. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to snip that bit off where I started. Take it all nice and flush. So how it will go is the back comes over the front. I think it's easier to dress it that way. So I will put vel a Velcro dot, which I've cut out with my um, Aki quilt. I'll show you them. And then that goes over the front there. So you put the hook on one side and the loop on the other. Let me just put a pin in so you can see how it would go. And that would come over the top of that one. So if you were doing this for a baby that didn't have special needs like um, Robin, you would put a popper on there. So you can see now that is the top part done so now what we need to do is the bottom part I don't know if that's going to be long enough maybe um, and it needs to be all nice and neat so this bit here I'm just going to trim that level and then we're going to see if we can get away with this bit here because we've got to go across all the edge bit of it so I'm feeding that back in if it hadn't been so curly I could have got away with it because I wasted quite a lot at the beginning trying to straighten it out. Let's see if I can manage it. So we're going around. These are quite shallow curves now, so it's a bit easier to do. Oh, I think we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. We're past the middle bit now, so we're going over the side seam. I hope we can all see all right. Right, what we all doing? Just finished a Louisa Gold EPP cushion. Oh, but that's beautiful. And the last two sets of scrubs for scrubs. 
glorious grubs in the Noah, in the Noah, what is it, Noah Evans, see more, let's see what we've put, to. Noah Evans fabric, I've not seen that, uh, Lynn, made some baby quilts for my friend's granddaughter to be born this Monday, oh, congratulations, I hope everything goes well. This binding foot is a godsend. I was really concerned about how to do this binding to make the vest look nice, but 15 pounds I think I paid, and it is worth every single penny. Yeah, we've done it. I'm just gonna run that off, trim that. So now you can see we've got the tops done there and that would come uh, Velcro on there, Velcro on there, and that goes over the front. So now we've just got the sides to do. Right, so I'm gonna turn you round again, back to my overlooker, and then I'll show you the um, Velcro bits. So, right, so what I need to do now is get those bands and pop one, on one side I'll post it on your page the DJ Chris Evans and Sundits did sponsor did, that's the sponsors yeah do that link because I'd love to see right so I'm just gonna stitch across the top there to catch in those ends so I need to try and make sure that they're nice and neat on the top so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lift my foot normally I just push things into the overlocker but I'm actually going to lift the foot and put it on top. I'm going to get some tweezers just to make sure that everything stays nice on there. I bet everybody's furious they're making masks now. It's going to be compulsory. I just spotted my elephant to upside down. I don't suppose it matters for the side bit. Take that out. So now we've got the little band on the sides and we're going to do the next one so lift the foot up get the little elephants and line that up and just make sure you line it up so it's all nice and neat with it being jersey you can just stretch it to fit so it's easy enough to do. Just make sure it's neat on the ends. Take that out. Off. And then we've got our sides. Sponsored to read huge amount of money for NHS groups. What a worthy cause, I've got to say. So there we've got our little vest. Um, I'm going to take these pins out because I keep stabbing my fingers and I'll take you around to um, my um, in fact I tell you what I'm not going to take you around there because it's a bit bad for you to keep on being seasick so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back to the sewing table which is not as far and I will get my velcro bits and show you how I did those sorry I, if that was too jumpy for you Right, just getting my um, little velcro circle. Right, I sent off for some sewing dots like this, and they came, and I think they were two ninety nine, three ninety nine, something like that, and they actually had sticky on the um, side. So what I wanted to do was, I wanted to put the hook on that side nestled in to that circle there and I put them on and I sewed around them and my needle gummed up instantly hi Sally so I um, I thought I can't use these I, I, I can't cope with the needle gumming up so Sharon um, Norbury who is watching came up with the idea of using the Aki quilt and my Aki quilt I used 
It's the speciality set by Edita Sitar. Is that right? Yeah. And in here, we have one that has got all these circles on. So I thought that is perfect. I put my hook and loop together and cut out loads of those little circles. So I've got them all ready for when she needs a vest and it works brilliantly. So I'm highly delighted with that. So all I will do is put one into there, put a zigzag stitch on and just a zigzag stitch all the way around. Hiya Vicky. Um, so it's worked brilliantly for me and that is, you were right, look, I did leave one behind. That is how I did my little vests for Robin. I'll just show you how the bottom goes. So how I did it then was the sides, I did the front to the back so that the opening was on the back, like that. And the bottom comes over the front. I put a bit of Velcro on there. I did a longer bit for that one. And then the circles I put on the shoulders and it works perfectly. So that would go like that. And you've got a lovely little vest. So I think that's round about it for this week. Um, I'm not sure what I'll be doing next week. I will be doing whatever is on my way. Oh, I said I was gonna show you something. That is what I use for my masks. So I think it was from, I want to say Embroidery Garden, but I don't think it was. I think it was Smart Needle. Um, so Smart Needle is um, an embroidery site and I think it was two or three pounds. And you got different ones. So you got the little paw print one. Um, you got the sewing machine one. You got your heart one. Missed a bit of fabric there. But basically what it does is the mask goes, um, this goes onto the back of your head and the elastics go around there so it doesn't hurt your ears. And I, I think they work perfectly. So if you leave your elastics a little bit longer um, and put around that, then you don't hurt your ears when you're wearing your masks. Um, I think it was Smart Needle. So go on to smartneedle.com and um, they're on there and there's a ton of machine embroidery masks. There's children ones, adult ones, um, funny ones, see-through ones, so that if people have got problems and they get a bit frightened, um, you can use the see-through ones. So there's lots and lots of free ones, but I think I did pay for this one. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and you can use these for all your masks, use them again and again. Right, so I'm just gonna bend now so you can see me. I'm gonna leave it there for now and I will catch up with you next week. If ever I'm not on, it's because I've got too much on. Um, but I will always put on on Thursday before I come on that I'm coming on. So I do try and get on every week and um, I do enjoy seeing you and give, having a chat with you all. Um, so keep an eye out for me posting on there that I will be coming on. But if I don't, don't worry, I'm fine. It's just that I've got a lot on. So thank you for watching everybody and I shall see you hopefully next Thursday. Thank you very much. Bye.